Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar discussion video. This is going to be my thoughts on the Avatar Comic Con at Home panel 2020. So they just put up the video, I got through watching it, and we knew it was going to be a pre-recorded thing involving uh, Mike DiMartino, FCE, Gene Luen Yang, and Faith Aaron Hicks, but there was also a Dark Horse moderator there to ask the questions and basically you know, be the host of the, the video call that they had going on here. Um, there was no fan interaction whatsoever, um, which <laughs> I suppose was, I felt was very purposeful that they chose to not in any way in preparation for this, ask for questions from fans like a week or two ago to set up for this, uh, in that what we ended up getting was the, uh, basically it's a continuous 40 minute conversation between them. But it plays out very much the same way too. If you've watched any of the Turf Wars uh, live streams that they do, treat it as basically being another one of them, except instead of like the voice actors, you just have the creators and they're just ask answering some pretty basic questions. Um, it wasn't a news panel. There wasn't really any news. There was this was one kind of bit of news, but it's more. It was more of a thing where like. They mentioned something that was kind of new about one of the books, which led to me looking into that and then finding the news uh, because an extra description and a new cover has gone up. But the news didn't actually come from the panel itself, but I I'll get to that. It's not that big. Um, so yeah, th th there was no news. They didn't touch on the Toph comic that was quote unquote revealed this morning um, because of course that book hasn't even officially been announced yet. Uh, it's just gone up early on a publishing site like has happened with the last few books that is not an official announcement we're still waiting on whatever website has the exclusive on the Toph comic to actually announce it we'll see what the story is with that I guess there's one or two uh, announcements that probably still have to come out from some sort of a comic announcement we'll, we'll see what happens with that uh, as of right now I still haven't seen what the situation is with that um, but yeah, m most of this is wasn't that interesting, you know, they, they had the usual sort of questions of how did you all get uh, into Avatar in the first place, how did you all get into working on the comics or books or whatever, they gave them a chance to like really quickly go over, you know, what book are you working on right now, what books have you worked on, um, there's like a question about, you know, your different mediums and uh, how you do fight scenes in them, which was, you know, again, they answered the pretty basically um there was a question about uh what was it oh yeah uh, have you noticed a, an increased popularity in avatar due to it being back on netflix and there was a bit of a conversation about that um as expected it came across as more of just a chat between the creators rather than anything particularly focused that i don't think any of them went into this with the idea that news or anything they said was going to be viewed as being news it was just a chat it was just a vague kind of promotional thing that wasn't really because that's always the weird thing with these panels you think that they'd be very heavy like super heavy on the promotion that like they'd be nothing but here's the book let me tell you about my book they surprisingly don't do that. They don't mention like release dates for pretty much anything. Uh, Faith Aaron Hicks was probably the, the closest to actually doing that properly because she said, I think, multiple times that the Katara comic is out in October. And that was really the only mention in this whole thing about like release dates for books. They had like a rotating uh, kind of a image thing of like covers for books. So like we saw the Omnibus for The Search, The Promise. Uh, like library editions and so on so you know they, they actually visually showed you some of the books they were talking about but again it, they, they didn't go in depth on like really any of them like the we, even with the Katara book when they brought it up there it was just a, a very like vague and it's just like was it, that's the whole story for how that book came about that Peter Wharton's favorite character is Katara so they decided to do a solo book on her and literally it was just why not pirate so let's make Katara a pirate for this book and that's where that whole thing comes from they confirmed it takes place during book two but again I think most people have figured that out already um but I'm just kind of like is that the full story there's no way that's the full story behind basically Avatar comics transitioning from Imbalance part three into Katara and the Pirate Silver 
that's ultimately probably what a panel like this should be revealing to us. All of the full details behind the scenes of how we go from like seven years in a row of comic trilogies continuing the story all in a row to suddenly we're taking a step backwards, we're doing things completely differently and we're stopping for now the continuation of that story. There's no way it's just Faith Erin Hicks is the current writer so she decided to do this, surely? But that has to be the case, right? But we don't know. Like, does how, how involved is Nickelodeon in this? How involved is Dark Horse in this? Because the way she says the story, it's just like, like spur of the moment. Like, oh, the next book will be Katara and pirates, and then the other next book will be Toph and metal bending. And it's like, uh, okay. What about Azula and the story everyone wants? Um, but like that sort of stuff wasn't brought up. Like, stuff relating to fans and, like, what people are interested in really didn't come up. Like, even FCE didn't get too much of an opportunity to talk about, like, the, the books that they even had to, like, be like, oh, yeah, yeah, talk about your book and be aware that when this video comes out, it'll be three days after the release of the book. And so he gave a vague, you know, this is what the book is going to be about. You have had to read the first book. They did about what you'd expect, you know, and... Um, you know, they, they all got their, their chance to kind of speak on things for the most part. But it was... If you've seen one of these panels before that involves, like, Mike uh, and everyone, like, y y you've kind of seen them before for the most part. Um, uh, like, M Mike, I suppose, was a little bit disappointing in that... I, I suppose he's so used to these panels and he's he's very careful to not speak unless he has to just because everyone will be reading into sort of everything he says because he's the the co-creator and um, so that that's that's fine i guess um but you wish he, he'd maybe be a little bit more open about just franchise direction type stuff but they're they're never open about that stuff ultimately which is frustrating but yeah the the, the news and, and what it was was that um uh, towards the end of the panel, the Dark Horse moderator mentioned that, okay, we've got some new editions of book books coming out, including a second edition of the Avatar The Last Airbender art of the animated series. At which point, Gene Yang sort of spoke up and was just like, oh yeah, yeah, I just heard about the new cover for this book that's going to be done by Team Guri Huru. And then there was a I think everyone sort of talked at once and there was just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like, what? There's new stuff related to the art of the animated series? What's going on here? Um, so they didn't show us any of this on screen here or really explain it anything beyond that. But if you look up the information on this book, like you go to like Penguin Random House, there's a completely new description for this book that now reveals that there's actually so much more to this. Um, it's now called a deluxe uh, second edition. And it says here it has these new features that are going to be part of this second edition. A stunning new cover art by Brian Konetsko with an extra special cover treatment. So the new cover uh, I found here on Edelweiss, really nice eyeing in the Avatar state from Sozin's Comet. You can tell it's uh, Brian Konetsko's art. Really, really nicely done. I love how much of a contrast there is between this cover and the first edition cover. One is very sort of peaceful. The other is much more like, you know, violent in a way. I, I like the contrast quite a bit. Um, they say it's um, special cover treatment. I don't know exactly what that means. I'm guessing there's just a little bit sort of a special sort of printing to it or something like that. That it's it's not your standard hardcover cover like the other books there's probably something a bit more to it it's maybe embossed in some way or whatever but either way brian Kanetsko cover so what about this team Girihuru thing the next uh, bullet point is eight pages of new material plus an all-new introduction by avatar the last airbender comic series writer gene yang so we knew about the new introduction that was the only new thing we knew from before so there's a page of introduction from gene yang and i think because of that my prediction for the eight pages of new material is that probably towards the end of this book, probably actually right at the end, the last pages of this book probably will be eight pages of material covering the comics. That's what I think, because there's a miscellaneous art section at the back of the original art book. I think they'll maybe incorporate the comics into that in some way to get across the idea that 
the show then continued via the comics. And because Dark Horse are the publisher for the art book and the comics, it only makes sense to, to do it like that. I'd be very surprised if this was like brand new pieces of concept art from Avatar itself and not just extra comic material stuff. Because obviously the, the original art book came out before most of the comics came out. I think basically all of them actually. Um, so they didn't have any sort of the knowledge that the comics will continue in the way that they did. So I, I, that's my um, prediction on what that is. Next note is a beautifully designed slipcase. So that means, okay, we're getting a hard, big hardcover book, but then there's also going to be a slipcase uh, over that, which I I don't know what that the full details on that are. Of like, is there going to be different art on that? Is it going to be the same as the cover art? or or what but i guess that's just a sort of protective slipcase over it it'll be interesting to see the just the full details and all of this stuff but they're going full on in on this being deluxe but then a collectible art lithograph exclusive to this edition i think that might be what the team guru Huru piece of art is for this it's the collectible lithograph so I, I, cause I think I heard them say something like hang up on the wall or something like that. So, um, I, I think that's it. So somewhere either across the slipcase, the new cover or the lithograph, uh, Brian Kinetsko and Gene Yang are each doing a cover. And then the final thing is gilded edges and a ribbon bookmarker. So gilded edges, I think just means that the, the, when the book is closed and you look at the pages from the side, top and bottom, the pages, instead of just being like white are going to be like shiny or something like that there's going to be like a color to them they, they've done like a, a little bit of a treatment to the edges of the pages just to make the book look nice from the outside and then ribbon bookmark is fairly obvious as to what that is um so yeah it definitely makes this now um i think something worth buying for fans i, I think it'll depend on more of the specifics of okay we, we have one of these new cover new pieces of art related to it what does the slipcase look like what is the lithograph and how what does it look like and so on but that now means it's more than just an introduction from gene yang there's there's some value in getting that which i do definitely appreciate um but yeah um as expected the panel wasn't much of anything really um so yeah pr relatively disappointing uh, on a day where we have learned about a new comic the the Toph comic uh and we've gotten a panel I, I think it's fair to say a, a good amount of the fandom has come out of this exceptionally disappointed um, that we should, uh, we could and should have more than this in, in many ways. Um, because I think they could do proper news panels for these things. Like other franchises do proper publishing panels where there are like news announcements and they don't just treat it as like a chat between creators like they seem to do with these avatar panels so I, I don't get why we can't have that for avatar at all um but again as i suspected if there was going to be any news it would come from outside of the panel which so far it has the news is going to come whenever we get the the article announcing the Toph comic which very much could come along with other book announcements because as we see here clearly there's some sort of a kind of a image reveal type stuff coming for the art of the animated series the new cover we've already seen the lithograph the slipcase still has to be revealed stuff like the rift omnibus cover the new cover for the uh combined short story collected editions that still has to come out um there's a new core comic that we're waiting for as well that's probably the big thing at this point in terms of telling us stuff about the future of the comics um, because right now it seems like Avatar, it doesn't look right now like there is going to be that post imbalance continuation just yet. So um, there is going to be increased focus on whatever the next core comic is and hopefully that announcement comes along with whatever the tough, proper announcement is for the tough comic. And then, yeah, they, they didn't mention anything about future books as well. So um, I, I'd i be shocked if they just let it lie like this. Just these are the only two Avatar books we're ever going to get. So it's probably just going to take time for them to plan and announce the next books. But uh, that that's where it is. Um, in a way, it's like just how popular everything has been this year with the Netflix, You th with the Netflix return of avatar you'd think they would have really blown the doors off here and just 
delivered a lot of news, but they chose for some reason not to and to deliver a pretty low key panel. So very, very unfortunate there. Um so yeah, we're we're just waiting for that news article basically is um my take on things. That will probably tell us more than anything. Uh, if there is how much there is or is not to, to come out so um yeah uh i come out of this ar- arguably feeling like just worse about the situation just because they have to know some of them somewhere in dark horse or, or whatever have to know how fans are feeling about some of these newer books and the sort of fear about the direction and not covering the, the kind of time periods that we want and just no sort of willingness to address that at all uh, feels very very uh, confusing to me but again Dark Horse have never been good at communicating with the fan base so this is nothing new um, once again we just have to wait I guess so um, they're my thoughts on the panel in the comments uh, let me know what your thoughts were on what on the panel if you watched it and I suppose the one proper piece of news I suppose we got is the extra new information on the second edition uh the deluxe second edition of the avatar art book uh what are your thoughts on that but that's been the video thanks for watching and bye